Welcome to Men, Sex, and Tantra. Discover where your parents, porn, and religion never taught you about being a man and having extraordinary sex. Get ready to have your mind blown and your world rocked. Expressing sexual desire. And what I see here in the men that I work with and the women that I work with is being disconnected Mm -hmm. from what desire is for them. Like a lot of the men that come to me uh, from a world of porn and they assume that what happens like uh, in, the, in the realm of porn is what happens in the bedroom <laughs> and then <laughs> <clears throat> okay I'm gonna fall off my chair all right yes yes that's very realistic <laughs> I, I want this huge thing that I can't even imagine where I would fit it shoved into my vagina and my ass at the same time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right. All day long. This works. That That's mechanical. That's the yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the women that come to me say that men just treat them like dolls, like, like a mannequin. There's no chemistry. There's no connection there. Mm-hmm. And it may have started with connection, but then it gets really mechanical. Mm-hmm. So there's this, there's this toing and froing this, this, incomplete dance where someone's doing tango another one's doing like line line dance and this is like this this keep missing keep missing each other so in that i see it's it's being the confidence to express sexual desire um what it is that you want and deconditioning from what you've experienced in porn like asking your partner hey you know what i want you to throw up on me (laughs) is not common no, um, really? No. <laughs> wow. Okay. I guess that's where I'm going wrong. <laughs> yeah, my boyfriends might ask for that kind of thing. But, <laughs> but no, there's like there's there's an element of, of of realism and connecting back to like like conscious, like conscious porn and conscious sex, which I actually watched a conscious porn a few weeks ago. And uh, it was beautiful. Like there was just two couple, like a couple that was just videotaping themselves in the act of um, physical intimacy and and the community the level of communication that's there and also the shyness of being in front of the camera mm-hmm. and just the 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 home the home aspect of it like it's in their house it's in their bedroom like it's set up like a bedroom it's not like this a porn yeah. set you know with like cock trophies in the corner you know it's like it's 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 legit so there's a there's a, a pace and a slowness and communication right, that's right. there in the desire of like, hey, I want you to, can you touch me here? And then also being able to lead the person physically, like bring, grab their hand and put it where you want it. Right. And maybe it's not comfortable there and maybe you take your hand away. So in being aware of the body and what the desire is, what you want beyond what you've read in books, seen on porn, talk over with your mates or whatever it is, then there's another layer of of individuality to your desire that can be discovered, unpacked and expressed, which will just revolutionize your life and your relationships. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, (laughs) I have a couple of things that I say about this. One is just because it turns you on doesn't mean you should do it, which... (laughs) As somebody who's been teaching sex for 37 years, people are always shocked when I say that. But like, seriously, just because it turns you on doesn't always mean it's a good idea. So I'm not shaming you for your turn on, but I am suggesting that our turn on and our desire gets programmed into us in just like our other programs that we have. So if you were a young boy, and you rubbed up against your babysitter's foot and got an erection, and that was your first erection, you would think foot erection, foot erection. And then every time you thought about that moment, foot erection, foot erection, the next thing you know, you are in defeat. Is there something wrong with that? No. No. But understanding that it may not even have been a natural desire, like had that foot not happened, So sometimes we think our desires are hardwired into us when actually they're programmed into us. And those two are a little bit different. They don't yeah, I love that you spoke that. to that. Right? Yeah. 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 So when I started telling the world about internet porn evils way, way long ago, when I started to see the shift happen where things were going to be bad because of the programming at a young age. Yeah. 
if you program yourself to look at the same porn actress in the same scene over and over and over and over and over and over again, it drives a neural pathway into your brain mm -hmm. that makes you only want that. Yeah. And since it can never be as good at that, higher dopamine levels are created in internet porn that don't happen in real life. Wow. You don't get satisfied with real wow. porn. So desire is a really complicated thing. But let's, for this moment, talk about how you could express the sexual desire you have in a way that is healthy. And when I say healthy, I do think there's unhealthy ways to express sexual desire. Totally. Um, I, and even, even probably more important to the men listening than that is not getting what you want. <laughs> So, you know, there's definitely ways to express it so you don't get what you want, right? And it's yeah, confusing. totally. Isn't it confusing? I mean, like women say, just tell me what you want. And then you say, I just want to bang you in the ass. And they're like, oh, don't say it like that. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> well, how do you want me to say it? It's pretty practical. like uh, Right? Yeah, right? Got, I, see, I see the variables. I've, I've, I've accounted for the variables. And I'm just expressing what I want. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, right. And so, you know, it's like, well, okay, so not all women want to hear it like that. Yeah. Right? So part of expressing your desire is, first of all, and I know John would definitely say this, is owning it yourself, knowing what the yeah. hell it is. Totally, 100%. Yeah, own it for yourself. So, and, and what does that look like, being able to own it for yourself? Like, what does desire? So I love what you spent since you spoke to the arousal, like the, the separation between the two, like desire, the, the separating the what arouses you and desire, um, which is like being able to know what it feels like to touch your own body, like and slowly. So like for me on this journey, um, my journey through porn and, and touching myself and tantric journey was learning how to just touch myself and slowly, not racing to grab my dick. Okay, cool. There's actually like the dick is a, operates is a, occupies a very <laughs> I want to say small area, <laughs> but an area in my body, <laughs> a very a dominant lure, area, a smaller area, of... <laughs> a throbbing massive area. No, <laughs> it occupies an area of my body, and so being able to touch like my own feet and my legs, and it was really weird for me to do this. I remember doing this at a, at a tantric course, and. Uh, just slowly touching my body and I actually there was a moment where we had we all um uh I started it was, a, it was a group session it was a workshop and I actually broke down into tears because I didn't know how to do this mm -hmm. like the age I was at the number of sexual experiences that I had I was like I actually don't know how to connect to my desire and what makes me like what makes me like this feeling that I'm looking for and in that moment, I had this, this shift in how I view sex and intimacy and all of those things. But to connect to yourself, is, is, it's slow. And so you've got to forgive yourself from all the stuff in the past. I like just throw out the book, whatever the book it is that you think is like, is my sexual desire, just throwing it out. And then ah, taking a deep breath. And then, yeah, starting to explore the body like the face like touching the face so you can express to a partner a partner like hey like this i want you to just touch my face slowly like i love it when you kiss me on the neck i love it when we just take things slow and not racing to ejaculation or, or climax you know like in i'm going a bit off tangent but when with sex now in physical in, uh, intercourse now like there'll be moments where i don't want to finish you know, she finishes and I'm like, yeah, cool. And she'd be like, you know, are you okay? Was that okay? I'm like, yeah, it's fine for me. Like, that's what I want. I don't need a, I don't need like this grandiose porn ending where like I stand on top of you and like create a necklace. Yeah. I was like, I don't need that. You yeah. know, like I, I'm, 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 I'm okay with the connection that we're having right now. Um, and then when I do want to come, like I'll, I'll do that. It's like, cool. I'll, now I want to do that. So honor that like be there can you be there for that while i do this um in, in not, not so <laughs> not words like that but just in that way so i guess expressing that sexual desire and connecting to desire is a practice that you need to choose to do and it's not it's not getting the goal of getting good sex is not is not the goal 
the goal is actually understanding yourself and your desires, which flows into all aspects of your life from food to conversation to everything. Right. So then the first thing is the choice, like, do I want to do this to, to connect to myself? Yeah. And I think what I, what I'm hearing you say from this is that you're not having sexual desire as a one-off thing from your life. Like this, this idea of desire is actually in the container of your life versus this separate compartmentalized thing. So yeah. if you approach your partner in that container where you've actually created the connection and you're, you're both um, feeling met, heard, listened to, you're in the dance together. When you ask, when you say things about the things you desire, you are also not tied to a goal. Like, you yeah. know, I mean, we, it's, there's nothing wrong for any of us to express what we want. As yep. long as we understand we may not get it mm. and being okay with that, like being totally. present to that moment, right? Totally. So there's that idea sometimes where we, we say, well, all of a sudden we've brought up the courage, you know, I want to come on your face, you know, and you're all like excited. You've said it. You're like there and she's looking at you like, why would I want you to do that? And I get it. You know, it's and probably if you're outside of that container, like if you've created like all of a sudden that becomes separate from everything we're doing. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a different feeling. I'll tell you from a woman's perspective that that's a different feeling. And the other thing is when you're talking about your sexual desires, it's usually not the best place while you're in the middle of it to throw something brand new that you've never talked about mm. in the mix. Like I would say that if you have things that you want to talk about, you know, I've never tried this or I haven't tried that. It's great to set up a conversation outside of the moment to talk about those things. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, Hey, you know, do you have, do you have some time? Hey, I'd like to really talk about these things that I've been thinking about sexually. And so it's not a fear. There's no, you know, you're the woman's laying there open hearted, feeling this romantic connection. And all of a sudden you'd say, I want to come on your face. Okay. That's a uh, screech. You know, there's like, <laughs> neither one of you is wrong in that moment, but she, totally. the container was wrong. What, what had just happened there was wrong. So mm -hmm. timing really does matter. And thinking about those, you know, I use the word containers, but that means the moments of time that are wrapped around what you're doing. It's like if you're watching sports, if you love sports or you're on the computer gaming and all of a sudden your partner walks in and goes, Hey honey. And you're just thinking, what the fuck? Look, can you see that I'm doing this right now? Yeah. totally. That's the same way women feel when you spring something on them sexually that they're not expecting right then. That's great. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, it's important to keep that in mind when expressing desire. I typically tell women and men that you want to practice out loud first mm -hmm. by yourself. So expressing desire is a truth activity and we can get really gripped and tight and freaked out about this. And then it comes out weird and strange and strangled and whatever else. And that's really abrasive and interruptive and, uh, kind of disconnected too. So let's say, you know, you, you don't even know, like most couples I work with, they don't even know how to have say, I want to have sex with you without making it be like maybe something you want to hide the sausage, you know, like something yeah. totally immature or something complete. Hey, let's fuck, you know, like pornified, right? All of these things. And it's because people are uncomfortable. Mm. saying it so like if you say and maybe your partner likes pornographic words maybe you should find that out maybe they don't because you would think that i would given what i do i don't i do yeah. not and i wow. hate the word naughty for god's sakes i'm not three <laughs> you know and so finding you know what you think is talking about desire and your partner might be different so it's good to find out what kind of language they enjoy and and they and are they fluid with their language can they yeah. roll in different times okay but you practicing hey honey or hey baby you know i really love it if you would put your finger in my ass yeah you know if you can say it differently than uh can you shove your finger up my ass you know like play with it 
outside of your body. Yes. Yes. You know? Yeah. Women especially have a hard time with it. But I think men too. Really, you know, when you ask a woman, what do you want? And she's like, she doesn't say anything. It's because she really doesn't fucking know. She doesn't know yeah. what's on the menu. But a lot of men don't know what's on the menu either. Mm. So re create your menu of the I things love that, that you desire. It and then read them out loud to yourself. Try mm. them on in different tones. Try them in a porn language. Try them in more romantic language. Try them in spiritual language. You know, <laughs> I think we have this kind of like, you know, for clitoris in, in the Tantra world is the pearl. So there's a really elegant, I'd like to polish your pearl, or a woman saying, can you polish my pearl, may be a more elegant way to say it that makes everybody more, more easy to say it. Yes. Right? So yeah. that's the part of it, too, is it has to kind of flow. If it gets stuck, if it's manufactured, if it's fake, it's not going to be fluid, and it's going to come off weird and disjointed. But so practice. So write your menu of desire. Mm practicing that out loud in many different ways and different formats. You can drop your voice too and say, Hey mm -hmm. baby, you know, try that. Uh, one of my partners was very shy about talking during sex. And I kept trying to tell, you know, I really want to, would love to hear what you had to say. And so one day he got really brave and he said, one, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> Is he a sound engineer? No, but it was hilarious because I could tell he was practicing the only thing he could think of at the time, and that was just to say numbers in a sexy way. <laughs> That's and right. surprisingly, it was very erotic. <laughs> That's so good, which goes to show you that it's it's the voice. It's the embodiment of the right. whole thing. Yeah. Right. He was present. He was there. He, that's the only thing he could say. He, was only, he couldn't say anything else. And I loved him so much in that moment. And I was so aroused because he was moving towards doing something that he knew I wanted to hear. Yeah. And like, that's a micro practice, right? That's a tiny little thing. And it's so, so it was so successful and it was so beautiful. And I loved it so fucking much. Like that was so endearing and so erotic and so many things. Mm. So practice in different ways. So what would you like to leave us with? As what would, I would say is that let yes lives in the, the <laughs> yes lives in the land of no. So when you, have a great ask of someone in a, in a relationship situation or whatever situation it is. Like you've got your desires, you know, you want to ask for something and they say, no, just acknowledge that, you know, that's a, that's a no and that's okay. And that at some point there'll be a yes, or you can speak to the no, like what's there. Cause a no can also be like a, a massive trigger for someone around, around something else around their past. I was like, yeah, cool. I hear that. No, like it's, a, let's unpack it. Like, is it a, is it a hard no? Is it a soft no? Like what's in there? So yes lives in the land of no. So give yourself a pat on the back if you start looking for those asks and those yeses because you're probably going to get end up with some no's to begin with. And then you're going to start flowing with the yeses because once you've created that container, again, it's just going to flow and it'll be, there'll be humor involved. It'll be so less serious. It'll be fun. It'll be playful, the joy. And there'll be a desire in wanting to express whatever your asks are. Nothing like laughing in the bedroom. Oh, I fuck yes. I swear to God, I am any man that makes me laugh in the bedroom, even if it's, yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> that is also hot. Absolutely. And yeah, we take it way down too fucking seriously most of the time, right? Yeah. So I hear you on that. So gentlemen, you have now ways to play with your desire and things to do and uh, try out and of course we always love hearing how things are going and if anything we've said is super valuable or funny or whatever i don't know maybe you hate it that's okay <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time thank you tanya bye everyone